Hello everybody and welcome, I'm Dr. Luigi Volluni. In this video lesson we will be talking about cell determination and differentiation and the regulation of gene expression. Once the zygote is formed from a sperm and an egg, a series of critical sequential events occur that lead to the development of an offspring. At its very simplest, the key steps include determination, differentiation, morphogenesis and growth. Once the zygote is formed, cells start to divide by mitosis to bring about the development of an embryo, which then becomes a fetus and eventually a newborn. Determination is the process that sets the developmental fate of a cell and the type of cell it's going to become before any characteristics have emerged. This process occurs during embryonic development and the position of the cell within an embryo and its chemical environment will determine the type of cell it develops into. Cell fate is determined early on during a critical time period. Unspecialized stem cells have the potential to develop into other cell types and specialize. Now let's see stem cell classification. Totipotent cells are present in the early embryo and they are capable of developing into any other cell type, including further embryonic cells. Pluripotent cells have the potential to develop into most other cell types, except forming new embryos. Later in the development, including adulthood, certain cells retain the capability to develop into a limited number of cell types, and they are described as being multipotent. All of the cells in an adult animal are described as being unipotent, as they can only produce their own cell types by mitosis. Cell differentiation follows on from cell determination and is the process by which different cell types arise, resulting in cell specialization, such as muscle cells, nerve cells or red blood cells. Cell differentiation is brought about by switching certain genes on and other off in the process of differential gene expression. Differential gene expression results from the expression of some genes and silencing others. This is achieved using proteins called transcription factors. By controlling transcription, translation and post-translational modification, gene expression can be regulated. Most regulation of genes during cell determination, and more importantly differentiation, occurs at the level of transcription. A transcription factor is a protein that can bind to DNA and either enhance or suppress the expression of a gene. This is largely achieved by making it easier or harder for key enzymes such as RNA polymerase to bind to DNA and start the synthesis of RNA. Control of transcription differs between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. In prokaryotic cells, the operon is the unit of transcription. This involves simple short-term changes to gene expression depending on the environmental conditions. This video will not explore how an operon, such as the LAC operon, works, but operons are well documented in biology books and other videos. Now let's focus on transcription in eukaryotic cells, and in order to facilitate understanding, I have simplified the concepts and graphics. In eukaryotic cells, gene expression occurs at various levels, including transcriptional. This determines the rate at which genes are transcribed. Post-transcriptional. This determines the types and number of messenger RNAs. Translational. This determines the rate at which proteins are synthesized. And post-translational which determines the availability of complete proteins. A transcriptional unit in eukaryotic cells has different elements, including the enhancer, which is a DNA sequence near or within a gene, the promoter, that is a region of DNA that binds to one or more proteins that regulate transcription, and a transcriptional unit, 
which is a region of DNA that contains both introns and exons that will produce the necessary gene. For transcription and regulation, various proteins and molecules must interact in a coordinated way to either activate or silence a gene. Transcription factors can be divided into activators or silencers and are needed to bind both to the promoter and the enhancer. Let's see an example. The phytochrome interactive factor, or PIF, is a transcription factor that acts in the seeds of cereal plants. The binding of PIF to a promoter is inhibited by Della proteins. In turn, Della proteins are controlled by a plant hormone called gibberellin. This hormone, by binding to a specific receptor, activates an enzyme that breaks down Della proteins. Now, PIF is free to bind to the promoter region, which allows the amylase gene to be transcribed. Thus, by regulating the breakdown of Della proteins, gibberellin controls the germination of cereal plants by switching the gene on and stimulating the synthesis of amylase. Given that amylase is only required during seed germination, then it is important to switch the gene on when required and switch it off when not. Now let's talk about RNA processing and alternative splicing. The initial transcript produced in the nucleus is called the primary transcript or pre-messenger RNA and contains both introns that are non-coding and exons that are coding segments of DNA. The primary transcript undergoes various types of processing, generally called RNA processing. The introns are removed and degraded, while the exons are retained to give a messenger RNA in a process called RNA splicing. The alternative splicing is a form of DNA splicing that helps generate different forms of messenger RNA from identical pre-messenger RNA molecules. This allows the expression of many different polypeptides from one gene, and these polypeptides can have different functions and activities. A good example is the production of antibodies. Regulatory RNA molecules, called small regulatory RNAs, are an important and exciting recent discovery in gene regulation. Two types are recognized, the small interfering RNAs and the micro RNAs. Both have similar functions and can repress messenger RNA translation and can trigger messenger RNA degradation. Let's now focus on post-translational modifications. Translational regulation controls the rate of protein synthesis. Once translation of a protein is complete, a protein can be further modified in various ways. Collectively, these ways or processes are termed post-translational modifications. This involves controlling the availability of functional proteins in different ways, such as degradation, where a part of a protein is removed, or adding a sugar molecule to form glycoproteins, or a fat molecule to form lipoproteins. Also, proteases such as trypsin must be kept inactive until it is secreted out of the cell. This makes sense for reason of cell safety. Gene expression can be influenced by chemical modification of DNA or histones. Epigenetics refers to modification in gene expression or phenotypic expression that are not attributable to alteration in the nucleotide sequence of DNA. Epigenetic modifications are the subject of the next video.